Well, hello traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets and we're doing it from a neoclassical perspective. That means we're looking at supply and demand on the charts. What a concept. We use that to determine timing, direction, and how to uh, enter and exit uh, various positions in your portfolio. You want to know which way to point. You want to know when to get in, when to get out. You don't have to go all in, all out. You just have to have an idea of, you know, how strong the market is, how weak it is. And you use that to, you know, to judge uh, how you play your trades. It's, it's not rocket science. It's, it's easy concepts, but uh, it's hard to implement. And it's also hard to see the subtleties uh, that are taking place. And sometimes that's where things bog down. As far as the, uh, the markets and uh, the earnings not the earnings but the actual numbers today you know you had a big move up in Apple so now Apple blows it out of the park right up 0.7 35 points on the index right so three quarters of percent higher but what do you do you're flat on the S&P you're flat on the Dow you're flat on the Russell no lift folks the Nasdaq you know is up half a percent the big one of course is the index because that's where Apple has the highest weighting but you can't carry the rest of the market. And that's usually what Apple does if it goes up. You got good gains in Europe, a bounce back there. You were down in Asia. Uh, TLT down almost a percent. Of course, this has been all over the map. Oil got a big spike. Uh, that was off of the news that uh, Trump is uh, you know, rattling uh, the sabers at Iran. And gold and silver sold down. I think they're up tonight. So big mixed picture Apple blows it out of the park can't move tonight we got Facebook Facebook also hits a decent uh, line drive they can't get over their highs after hours again I think it's gonna be difficult for this market to move higher and I believe that's what this market has been telling you and is still telling you uh, as we zero in here on the S&P so what do we have on the S&P you got a day up right you test now you got a gap down area right you test into that gap area this is the low this is the high of that bar down you go right into that spot you have decent volume but you can't get over it folks if you can't get over it and tomorrow's going to be the big test if you can't get over it you're going to set up an ABCD structure potentially to go to the downside and that could be problematic so S&P as I said last night it's going to have difficulty today. It did have difficulty even with the Apple blowout. If we move over to the um, the Russell, the small caps, you got the same picture here, right? You get a you get a push up, but you have the potential now to set up an ABCD structure again to the downside. And this thing's been playing out ABC structures to the downside. You had them all the way down now, so you had one here right that bounced down and eventually was met uh, you had another one that was here actually went all the way back up so that one didn't happen you tried to set up an ABCD structure here right to the top side but it doesn't look like it's gonna make it right that would be the one that could you know push this thing higher instead it looks like it's gonna try to the downside again so Russell big move up still consolidating hasn't changed NASDAQ, NDX, certainly much stronger. They've been the ones that's carried it up, and they're still trying to carry it up. But I want you to notice the NASDAQ was unable to make a new high on Apple. And if you go to the NDX, it's the same story. And if you carry that thought a little bit farther, you weren't able to move up on most of the sectors. You couldn't get movement there. And so, you know, when you're looking at this as a whole, uh, this market is struggling. It's struggling to get higher. And whether, you know, whether you want to blame it on this or blame it on that, you know, that's irrelevant in my mind. It doesn't really matter why it's not doing it. it just matters that it's not doing it. You know, semiconductors couldn't make new highs. And that's even with Apple. You go elsewhere, basic materials, uh, a, a mindless day up. XLE tries to trade down, trades down with more volume. We'll probably try again tomorrow despite oil going up. 
XLF tries to push higher, ends up coming back, still range trading. And you just go down the list, still consolidating, folks. This, this market can't move. Um, I talked about, I, I want to go back and revisit one thing here. I talked about a post earnings trade setup. And I gave you one last night. I gave you an example and told you about Dow. Well, what does Dow do? You know, it, it did exactly what it should do. You come into, well, it does it actually does a little better than what it should do. You come into the retest regenerate. You hit into it yesterday. You, you can, because it's a retest regenerate after uh, before more than six bars, right? That says you can get into the bottom third. So you have to plan on it to at least come that deep. That's your best buy point. But it just barely touches into it, and then it bounces off today up 1% those kinds of trades you know you got your back you know with the wind behind you right it's it's a trade that's higher you get an earnings bump you come back on a retrace now you get the push back up whether this carries up and actually gets you back up to here if you if you take the first entry and you plan on taking another one you've got the situation now in your favor right all you got to do is put a stop in there break even at worst you didn't get volume up on the way back. You're coming into the bottom of this bar. Uh, 60.21, 60.30 is the close. You want to see it get in there and get higher tomorrow. If it doesn't, you take profits. And you, and you, you, you play the next trade. I mean, that's if you're trading, that's how you trade them. I got a question uh, on the comments uh, from the show. I think it was last night's show or the night before on Apple. So I'll take Apple. I want to point out, uh, so Apple has a nice big spike up, right, volume. Now, Apple hits 130.50, pulls back, closes at 128.75. The question was, is is it going to, let's, let's go see what the question was, actually. Uh, just a second here, let me blow it up and get the question for you. So the question was, uh, perhaps perform a bullish do you believe that apple will pull back perhaps perform a bullish retest regen of that 11 20 15 123 swing point okay so 123 let's uh, that's probably a monthly chart let's go to the monthly here pull this over so we can see it all and pop this up and what do we got here? 123.82 is this swing point high. So the question is, will it come back into this? Well, you know, the first thing here is that you're actually testing into the highs now, right? So you're you're deep into the high. So usually when you do that, you're going to try to reach the other side. And so that means you're going to try to make it to the highs. That high is about 134.54. So that's what it's trying to do. Um, is it going to come back into this? Probably. Will it come back immediately is, is more of the question. I don't know, right? You, you got a nice pop-up. You had some decent volume. But if you look at it on the weekly, the volume is not great comparatively. You know, go back to September, you don't have that kind of volume. So, you know, this thing certainly can come back in. What you need to do is, is wait a day or two and see how it plays out, right? Because, because you know, after... After the enthusiasm, they did. They were willing to pot, buy, buy it higher and higher, right? So they were willing to pay up to get in. You're not at all time highs, but you're getting close. And in fact, you know the 134 area, you could certainly hit that area. What you want to know now is what does it do from here? It can do one of two things. It can actually just push on up and close at a new high here. Or it can struggle in this area and actually come back in deeper, which may come back and hit that 123 area you're talking about. And so, you know, it depends on what the next couple days are. If it skies rockets up, right, just keeps climbing up, then this top becomes the bottom and that becomes the support zone. If it doesn't and it comes back in and it settles into this area, yeah, the odds are pretty good you'll probably hit it before um, you know, before you go take out the tops. It's going to probably set up a range. It's just a question of how it sets it up. And you won't know that until you see another day or two of trading. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. As far as these markets, I think the markets are going to struggle. I've, I've been saying that for a while. It still looks that way to me. I don't see anything different here 
uh, that would suggest anything different to me. Uh, that's where my head is. That's what I'm thinking, and that's where I'll leave it tonight. Uh, Facebook, probably not going to move to market. If it does anything, it will sell off and move it to the downside. I just think this market uh, it has to do more work and already go up. Have a great one. Take care. See you next time.